In Informatica Developer, you can use a mapping parameter to represent a connection. A mapping parameter represents a constant value that can change between mapping runs. You can use a mapping parameter when you want to vary the source, target, or lookup connection between mapping runs. For example, you might have a mapping that reads and writes data in your development database. You want to use the same mapping to read from an identical source and write to an identical target in your production database. Create a parameter to define the source and target connections. You specify parameter values in a parameter file. Parameter files are XML files that list user-defined parameters and their assigned values. They must conform to the schema definition that's included in the PowerCenter Express installation. In this demo, we'll explain how to create and use a mapping parameter so that we can change the source and target database connections between mapping runs. We'll create a mapping parameter to represent a database connection. We'll apply the parameter to the source and target relational data objects in the mapping. We'll create parameter files to define the different connection values. Then, we'll run the mapping with the different parameter files. Let's open a mapping that reads from a relational data object and writes to a relational data object. This mapping reads sales transaction data from a relational table. It calculates total sales for each transaction and ranks them by employee. It then writes the top two sales transactions for each employee to another relational table. If we examine the source, we can see that it uses a relational connection. The target also uses a relational connection. Let's change the source and target connections to use a mapping parameter instead of the relational connection. First, we'll create the mapping parameter. Click the Mapping Editor to view the mapping properties. Create the parameter in the Parameters tab of the Properties view. Click Add to add a parameter. Enter a name for the parameter and set the parameter type to Connection. We need to specify a default value for the parameter. The Data Integration Service uses this value when you run the mapping without specifying a parameter file. It also uses this value when you generate the parameter file at the command line. Select a default connection and click OK. The Developer tool adds the parameter to the mapping. Now we'll update the source to use the parameter instead of the relational connection. Connection information appears in the Runtime properties. Open the Connection field and select Assign Parameter. Select the parameter and click OK. The source is now configured to use the parameter. Let's update the target to use the parameter too. The target is also configured to use the parameter. We need to verify that our mapping is valid. Right-click the editor and select Validate. Our mapping is valid, so we'll save the mapping. Now let's deploy the mapping to the Data Integration Service so we can run it. Right-click the mapping in the Object Explorer view and select Deploy. Select the Deploy to Service option. Select the Domain and the Data Integration Service. When we deploy an object in the Developer Tool, the Developer Tool creates an application to run the object. Let's configure the application name. Click Finish to create the application and deploy the mapping. Our mapping is successfully deployed. If we check the Object Explorer view, we can see that the developer tool has created an application to run the mapping. If we open the application, we can see that it contains our mapping.
Now let's create the parameter files so that we can run our mapping with different target connection values. We need to open the command prompt. We'll use the info command ms list mapping params command to create a parameter file. We need to specify the domain name, data integration service name, domain user name, domain user password, application name, and mapping name. We'll also specify the output file. The O option specifies the output file name and file path. The output file is the parameter file. Let's open the parameter file in a text editor. The parameter file contains two sections, one for the application element and one for the project element. The application element section defines the parameter values to use when you run the mapping in a specific deployed application. This section is commented by default. The project element section defines the parameter values to use when you run the mapping in any deployed application. Because we haven't deployed this mapping in any other application, we'll define our parameter value in the project element section. Notice that the list mapping params command has set the parameter value to its default value. Let's return to the command prompt and run the mapping with this parameter value. Use the info command ms run mapping command to run the mapping. We need to specify the parameter file and location. The pf option specifies the parameter file. We'll also specify the wait option. The w option causes the info command utility to wait for the mapping to complete before it returns the command results. Now we'll run the mapping. Our mapping ran successfully. Now let's create another parameter file so that we can read and write data with a different connection value. We'll save the original parameter file with a new name and update the connection value. Let's save the parameter file. Now let's run the mapping with the new parameter file. Our mapping ran successfully. That completes this demo. To summarize, we created a mapping parameter, we applied the parameter to relational data objects in the mapping, we created parameter files to specify different connection values for the parameter, and we ran the mapping with different parameter files. If you have feedback on this demo or to request a demo on another topic, email us at infa underscore documentation at informatica.com. You can also tweet us on the Infa Support Twitter site.